Awesome Rants made a video about the whole Coney 2012 movement. For those of you who were under a rock and missed that, there was basically this guy named Coney who was some sort of military dictator kidnapping children supposedly and using them to support his army in terms of taking over some country. I don't even know the whole story. I don't remember. It was a while ago. I, I made a video about it and I can link it via annotation and video description if you want to hear my thoughts on the overall thing. You know, spoiler alert, it's not very good, but what Awesome Rants talks about here is very interesting and it sparks something in my mind that I think is really worth discussing. She says how there's three major aspects that we can think about things. The ethos, the logos, and the pathos. I'm not exactly a philosophy major. Let's see if I can remember. I think that ethos is how the author or the presenter conducts themselves. The logos is what logic you use, how you demonstrate what's going on. And the pathos is the emotional appeal. The way that the audience feels about something and the way that you use that to your advantage. And what she's talking about is how people are so easily manipulated on the pathos only by their emotions. They didn't care about what credibility the author had and they didn't care about what logic may or may not have been present in that presentation. Obviously many people believe that the main purpose behind Coney 2012 was just to make a ton of money and although I don't necessarily intellectually believe that, being a cynic I kind of have to accept that at its bare tenant. Like, I think that people were trying to manipulate these negative situations to make a quick buck. But what she's saying is, what if somebody did this for a malicious purpose? Because the internet is basically exploded. It's regarded as like a small on the side thing, but it really is becoming the mainstream. So many young people are picking it up. And in the future, 20, 30, 40 years, when all the old people who aren't using it die off, and the new kids who are being born are people who are brought up in this culture, it's going to be the main thing. The internet is the main culture. So what happens when it's that much easier to promulgate things on the internet? And what happens if negative ideas are being used? Obviously people's pathos, their emotional state, it's very easy to coerce. That's why when people heard about starving children in Africa, they were so willing to just jump on board and do whatever they had to. If you convince people emotionally to do something, but it's really not for the better good, you know, some really horrible things can happen. For example, you could theoretically have a World War II scenario where you get everybody to hate one group of people like the Jews and you get concentration camps. Maybe you're convincing people that that's for the best and you're going to be helping people in the long run. If that seems impractical, you know, gathering up millions of people and killing them kind of is, but take it like homosexuals in society today. There are a lot of extremist right-wing nutjobs who will say that the gays are destroying culture and we have these earthquakes and tsunamis that are God's sign that we're embracing the gay culture and that's horrible and they should all be killed or forced to convert out of homosexuality. I think it's very plausible that something could happen like this. The only way on the bare bone to say that it can't happen is if people stop just focusing on their emotions and they focus on the other two major aspects of conveying messages. The only problem is people just don't. I mean, the other two require a lot more reflection and effort. It's not that these people are stupid and they can't. It's just that people have such a short attention span. In order to look up this person's credentials and see how honest they are and what credibility they have, or to actually look through the arguments, do research and learn, hey, maybe this guy actually isn't very powerful anymore. Maybe he's not a threat anymore. That takes a lot of time and effort, and people just don't feel like investing in that. But emotions require no time investment at all. You see something, you see a video with starving children, it, it gets to you. You have a strong feeling about that. So it requires no effort, it's very easy to do. So it's the quickest way to reach any sort of conclusion. So in our attempt to just save time, people do that. It's the easiest thing to do and it helps people make decisions much more quickly. One thing I disagree with Awesome Rants on though is how she says it's about people's best interest. Like people just really, really care about these problems. In a way, I disagree. It is about the emotions, but ultimately our emotions purpose is to bring happiness for ourselves. Even if you're like working at the soup kitchen helping little old people get their food, you're doing that because it makes you feel good, it makes you feel right, like you have some sort of purpose. Everything that we do, pretty much everything has a selfish purpose. Even if it doesn't benefit you directly, it feels right, it feels good. And in that way, it's sort of like a benefit. One such example of this is haters of Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber became really, really huge in pop culture media. So, of course, there are a ton of people who are saying, hey, he kind of sucks. And those are people who are honestly looking at him and judging him and saying, hey, he's not good. 
But that sort of became a mu movement on his own, is people who are saying that they're above that stupid thing and they're better than Justin Bieber, even though they're just clinging on to that new subculture that just hates Justin Bieber. The practical application of that in this situation is people who are against Coney 2012. There are people making animations on YouTube making fun of it, comedy stand-up, people making vlogs criticizing it like I did. You know, there are various people who, when they saw Coney 2012 was something that you could criticize, just jumped on that. Of course, for the majority of these people, it wasn't an implication of the logos or the ethos. It was just them using the pathos. They say, hey, here's something I can jump on. I can be a hipster, so to speak. I can be on this new trend. I can look cool. I can be oppositional. Maybe I'll be part of the new movement that rises. In reality, this is the only way, in my opinion, that you can fight this sort of thing. You can't force people to do more than just go on bare-bone emotions. So you have to use that to your advantage. You have to get people to passionately fight against a negative problem like this. As long as there are people out there who are capable of looking at things objectively and seeing if there are things to criticize, if they have internet mediums to make their criticisms on, you can eventually share that with other people and it can catch on. There are always people who are willing to criticize something and be opposed to it, so long as there's a movement to join. And the bigger that movement gets, the easier it is for these people to join. So that's my answer. You can't make people honestly reflect on these things. All you can do is make a social movement and get people to hop on board with that. That's all you can do. And there's no guarantee that you're going to prevent something evil from coming through. But it certainly helps. It's like you've got this battle of people just fighting with their emotions. You need to make your own army of people fighting with their emotions. And if you do that, maybe it'll help fight off the evil coming through. I don't know. Will it? I'm not... I, I was born too early. I'm not going to be in an age that's totally dominated by internet media. So I can't know all the situations. However, based on human nature, I think that that's very reasonable to assume. I think that something like that will happen. If anything is going to happen about this at all, in my opinion.